the updates. Welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the BMW 3 Series Grand Limousine, the G28. This is the LCI version, which is basically the facelift. And straight away, we are going to be opening the engine bay. Not much has actually changed in this car. So I just pull it upwards and there it goes. There's no insulation there. It doesn't need it because this is the twin power turbo petrol engine, which is rocking a bit, but it's extremely refined on the inside. Washer fluid goes in right there. This is the engine number or chassis number of the vehicle. And yeah, beautiful looking engine, really like it. Let's just shut this. So not much has changed actually because the grille seems to be similar. The lights seem to be slightly slimmer with these beautiful looking DRLs, which are amazing. And it looks absolutely mind blowing at night. It says BMW LED on the side and you can see the indicator functioning on the other side. They've actually revised the bumper of the car, which is a bit aggressive and different. In fact, this grill opens and shuts depending when it wants to breathe. That's a cool feature to have. This is very much functional, yes. And you've got front parking sensors, of course. BMW logo there right on the top. Now, this car is actually longer when compared to the standard wheelbase version of the 3 Series. So, this is actually almost, not almost, it's more than 4.8 meters in length. The wheelbase is almost 3 meters. So, it's 110 mm longer in terms of wheelbase. The ground clearance has been raised by 6 mm because obviously the wheelbase is so long. It's a long car, it's beautiful. But because of the size, the wheels actually look small. In spite of the fact that this is the M Sport version, which is running on 225, 45, 18s, alloy wheel design is absolutely fantastic. You'll love it. <laughs> it says sensor is here as well. Anyways, at night, okay, when you unlock the car, there's a light which comes out from here. There's a light which projects on the road as well. And that projection actually comes from here. Yes, there's a light there which actually projects it kind of cool you get the shark fin antenna of course coming to the rear the changes are not that drastic because the lights look very similar this is the fog lamp it says 330 li right there this is the camera of course and the bumper has been given a very aggressive treatment so you get a sort of diffuser treatment here and you get these different design for the exhaust of course that is the outlet i mean this is a design element the real exhaust is on the inside of course you've got Dual exhaust, vessel can't fingers of tooth, which stay away from something like this. Towing hook, rear parking sensors, beautiful looking car. The 3 Series looks fantastic. You can actually come and stand here and wave your foot and the boot will actually open. Okay. There's a reflector here. And let's just open the boot. So let me show you the key of the vehicle. This to unlock the car, this to lock the car, this to open the boot of the car. And this is for actually like singing, uh, I mean, getting the alarm to ring so that you know exactly where is the car. Power tailgate, of course. Yes, it is a powered function here. And there's the warning triangle. Now, this is 430 liters in terms of space. There's a cubby hole here. There's some storage space there as well with the first aid kit. And the spare wheels should be placed right there. It is actually placed right there. So the tire size is smaller at 135, 80, 17. Toolkit is placed almost everywhere, but some storage space is given here as well. Can I lift this? I can, but I'll need, no. Yeah, what am I doing? Okay, yes. Nothing is there actually, no point lifting it. Let's just shut this, I press this button. There it shuts. It's a lovely looking car. I love it. Let's get to the rear, where the real action lies because of the longer wheelbase by 110 mm. Legroom has actually increased by 43 mm this good amount of space on offer but you know what's the problem no sun blinds here there's no sun blind there as well which is very disappointing and there's good amount of legroom look at that 
Nero and legroom is just fantastic. No magazine holder, slightly scooped out. In fact, ambient light is here. Yeah, they're giving ambient light here as well, which is kind of nice. Under thigh support is good actually. And there's a big hum, so a third passenger is not welcome here. Controls for the air conditioning given right here. Two USB-C charging sockets, AC vents placed here. No height adjustable seat belts at the front. You get a hook handle to hold on to. Seat recline angle is actually fine. There's a center armrest, which has got twin cup holders as well and some storage space right there so it's very comfortable at the rear uh, the recline angle could be slightly better you get this soft pillow everybody gets a head because the center passenger also gets a head light placement here on the top you get a panoramic sunroof which is quite nice brings in a lot of airy feeling easy to move this ahead and behind as well so bmw has done a fantastic job by actually giving a lot of practicality to the three series door pockets are also big enough and the dashboard design looks very similar when compared to before but we've got new screens now which is fantastic so i actually like it let me show you the headroom it's good but you know recline angle could be slightly better because i don't feel that comfortable it could be more reclined for sure doors are actually longer now yeah they are quite long in fact it's not just the doors even the roof has been lengthened so they had to obviously increase the length of the roof they have to increase the length of the doors as well because most of it is going in the back of course the bmw logo looks beautiful now it has this m sill right here which actually illuminates at night looks beautiful adjustment for the driver's seat of course and obviously it is powered so it's moving right now and uh, you know what you can save up to two people settings as well under that support is never an issue you can just open this like that Door pockets are big at the front, this is to open the boot of the vehicle, it says Harman Kardon, Harman Kardon audio system of course. These are the controls for the power windows, for outside rear view mirror adjustment, beautiful leather treatment, dual stitching, nice colours. This ambient light colour actually blinks red when you open the door to tell people behind that, you know what, there is a hazard here. It's a nice feature to have, there is a secret storage compartment here, these are the controls for the lights of course. And the seats are very nice and comfortable, really love them, the steering wheel gets the M logo here because obviously it is the M Sport and air conditioning is actually turned on so we are going to go into the menu and shut it. So what physical controls are gone it seems because there are some switches right here. Volume control, audio controls, a hidden behind in a track. This is actually for the hazard light and this is for air conditioning. So everything is actually gone into the screen of the vehicle and attention detail is so crazy. The indicator is functioning right now. I am actually turning on the lights. You can see it is showing that as well and if I change the indicator it also does that. And if I change the steering wheel angle, it shows that too. How amazing is that? Auto dimming, of course. But here, the mirror is kind of small. There's a light placement on the top, of course. You get a mirror along with a light here as well. Uh, this is nice. There's a handle to hold on to for the driver too, which is kind of cool. There's a mic placement here. Let's actually open the sunroof and there it is opening. So it's decent sized and the colors in the cabin are just the right ones. It opens even further. Oh my God, it is quite big. Well, that's, that's what she, what she said. said. You get light placement here on the top. Yeah, the usual bits which you expect. And the glove box is actually small, not really big. Uh, no, this is not hard plastic. You get this piano black finishing here. Soft materials almost everywhere. And there's some storage space here along with a USB-C charging socket and a light placement is also given there. Nice material which has been used. iDrive controller is retained which is fantastic. This is for the electric parking brake auto hold function. These are the drive modes. This is the engine start button and traction control, parking sensors and this is for the stop start system. This is to get into park from the gearbox position but there's a new lever now so this is actually the gear selector which is quite nice and there is i mean a wireless charging pad a usb regular a charging port a cigarette lighter and then obviously twin cup holders as well so it's practical in that regard now the steering wheel can be adjusted both for reach as well as rakes so i'm just going to push it inside you've got paddle shifters steering is the same as before the horn Oh my god, that is nice and very loud indeed. These are the controls for the cruise control. These are the controls for this screen and for audio system as well. And uh, yeah, like I was telling you, paddle shifters, automatic wipers, automatic headlights, of course. Let's use the wipers right away. You see, yeah, there is spray which is coming out of the wipers itself. There's good amount of spray on offer. Cleans the windscreen in no time at all multitude of airbags it says airbags almost everywhere now the real highlight happens to be the new screens so this is a 14.9 inch curved screen this is a 12.3 inch screen okay the graphics are very crisp that the design could be better so i can actually browse through this by actually deciding how i want things to look 
So I get into the layout. I can actually move the layout, I make it wide or make it narrow, make changes like this. So here, get into the throttle. Oh no, it's not showing any of that. But yeah, this is how they have done it, which is actually cool enough. And then I can decide what I want to see. So that is the GeForce meter. This is the audio system. And I can get into the map view as well. There's a compass. So pretty nice and nifty and easy to browse once you get the hang of it, of course. So this is the new instrument cluster in BMW cars. The overall layout could be better. Honestly, with the tachometer looks quite weird. Let's get on the throttle. There you can see, oh my God, red lines at 7,000 RPM. Absolute bonkers. Now this is the talk of the town, 14.9 inch curved screen. So let's actually get back and to the home function, come on. It's a fingerprint magnet. I was showing how much attention to detail is there. Beautiful maps, check this out. Isn't that amazing the way the quality has been done? Let's actually get out from here. So the problem is that there are just too many things to go through. Look at this, <laughs> yeah, lot of functions and all. Interior lighting is something which is interesting. So we can get into the color part of things. So there are actually around nine colors. It's just nine colors, not 64 colors, which you get in BMW and Hyundai cars. Dual zone climate control air conditioning system. I get into the climate menu and here is how I can operate the climate control air conditioning. So nice screen, but it's a fingerprint magnet. And then again, for the air conditioning, you have to get into a separate menu and all, which is a bit of a cumbersome affair, the usual bits. So very crisp display and you can get a lot of information, but let's actually get into reverse. This is the reverse parking camera and it obviously gets adaptive guidelines as well. And the parking sensors do a crazy dance. So we have got front and rear parking sensors, parking sensors like 360 degree ones. And then there's reversing assistant. Just play some audio for me. Audio quality is fantastic. I think 16 speaker Harman Kardon system, very nice. No gesture controls in this car, which is disappointing at this price. You would expect that, of course. When I shut the car, it does this beautiful design motion thingy there. Yeah. And when I actually turn on the car, it again does a very beautiful thing on the cluster. Now, when you change the drive modes, it actually changes the color of both the screens. So look at that. It's kind of cool how this has been done. Yeah, so there it actually changes. So colors change according to the drive mode, which is kind of cool and nice as well. And then obviously you've got Isofix child seat mounts at the rear. Hey, BMW. I am feeling hot. Okay, I will reduce the temperature. It will be more comfortable shortly. Let me know if it gets too cold for you. So obviously it has got these voice commands which work better than before and then when I open the door, it exactly shows me which door is open, which is also quite nice. Now because this is a rear wheel drive vehicle, the rear tyres are actually bigger. So these are 255s, 14, 18s, yeah, the front ones are actually 225. So you get more rubber at the rear so that you can do things like this. Alright, we are all set to go. First and foremost, get into the climate menu. We are going to shut off the air conditioning, which is a bit confusing, but now it's off completely. And now I'm actually going to get into the journey data and I'm actually going to reset it. So we are actually going to identify what is the speed and everything we have done on this particular drive. That's not all. The drive mode has to be in sport. Here we are in sport individual. I've already configured stuff, nothing much to configure as such. So anyways, just come back screen. Yeah, sport individual. Yeah, here we are back back into this particular thing and yeah okay individual has already started the timing right now then we are going to turn off traction control which has a sport mode so dynamic traction control activated we'll do that as well come back here we are left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights off revving the motor launch control active and off we go It actually did upshift quite 
fast like it did not reach the red line it shifted earlier only because that's how launch control actually works and trust me the performance is actually very good for a four cylinder engine so this is the 330 li which means it's powered by a 2 liter four cylinder petrol engine yes nowadays 330 means four cylinder not six cylinder which was the case earlier of course with the e60s and what not problem is that uh, you will not really miss a six cylinder because the engine has so much grunt it has instantaneous power you get on the throttle it immediately reacts and it pulls so fast and nicely that honestly <laughs> the m340 and kind of is an overkill but then i am the person who would love an m3 which also is six cylinder by the way so performance is very nice the engine is so refined it's unbelievably smooth and refined it picks up pace like this and uh, there is good amount of grunt load down turbo lag is well contained this is obviously turbo charged but turbo lag is super well contained and then there's a nice mid range and overall performance is very linear but has a very frantic top end it loves to rev this engine it's very nice in fact here we go So it is making 258 horsepower at 5000 rpm. Look at the way the tires are making sound. Okay, some bag of mine where I keep all my equipment, not all the one I'm shooting with right now, was sliding. That's why you could hear that. But otherwise, the tires are screaming for traction, even though these are Y tires. So that is the kind of performance and handling we have here. The motor has quite a lot of grunt. 258 horsepower at 5000 rpm. but the torque output is 400 newton meters and that 400 newton meters comes in at 1550 rpm stays there at 4400 rpm you know what is 400 newton meters of torque exact same torque output as the 320d yeah so the 320d makes 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque personally i would pick that for the efficiency but this one is unbelievable in terms of performance 0 to 100 km per hour comes up in a claimed 6.2 seconds but you can actually take this car from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 5.8 seconds it is faster than bmw's claim numbers that is how quick this is unbelievable that's also almost half a second quicker <laughs> that's fantastic so it's paired to an 8 speed torque converter automatic gearbox which is sourced from zf it's fast with shifts and then you have got manual control as well so you can shift gears yourself too so here as soon as i click one of the pedals it says m4 there m3 m2 and rev the nuts it's almost 7000 rpm 6800 rpm it will not upshift unless and until i decide to do so giving me proper manual control of things which is fantastic so it's saying 4.8 kilometers per liter right now with this kind of driving style performance is fab top speed is above 220 kilometers per hour it's a fast car and it's not very loud on the inside but it has that sporty snarl once you cross around 4 and a half thousand rpm it has a very nice top and it has got grunt throughout the rev range there's no flat spot in the power delivery at all what a fantastic engine bmw has made really very nice and that's the reason like the 330 is just amazing in terms of performance in terms of grunt in terms of the way the power is delivered it's fantastic i really 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 like it and then there are uh, three drive modes so there is eco pro which makes things easy going like right now we are in eco pro that is the eco pro mode so the map changes it's not very aggressive with power delivery it's a bit laid back there then we've got comfort mode which is a balance of eco pro and sport and then you know when you come into comfort okay when you come into eco pro you can actually configure it so here i'm going to configure the individual part so basically you can set stuff like climate control the eco pro side basically for defogging and all coasting function and steering wheel can either be in comfort or sport yeah so basically uh, let me actually get into sport mode when i do that now it has this individual function which lets me configure what the steering the drivetrain and the transmission which is steering engine and the gearbox and you know what either you can get it into comfort mode or in sport mode that's about it there is no change to anything else so the ride remains the same no matter what mode you are driving in and the ride is actually quite good because this car is obviously softened up because it's all about comfort here with the grand limousine ride quality is actually quite good this car is kind of on the softer side but has this wavy feel at higher speeds and it kind of wafts along when you go higher up above 100 km per hour on such road like look at this okay yeah you can feel a bit of the bounce as such so overall ride is good especially in the city is fantastic out on the highway also it's good enough only thing is with these 18 inches low profile like this 45 profile tires you can hear i mean you can hear a bit of the road noise which isn't in that reassuring although there's very good insulation you can't hear much of the engine where i'm very disappointed because i wished it was a bit louder gearbox has three modes there's a regular drive mode so here this is the d 
and then I can actually click it once again to get into sport and then I can click the paddles to get into manual mode manual mode will let me control the gearbox completely and it will not upshift unless and until I decide to do so which is fantastic the lunge ahead is so strong in this car you get it on the throttle there is no hesitation it's just ready to just lunge ahead yeah that is how good the performance is i really like it okay since we are at it i think i should maybe make changes to the content which i cannot do while driving so it has that parameter too it doesn't let me make changes when i'm driving the car and brakes obviously very strong here with the bmw at the end of the day so it has to have very sharp and strong stopping power there you see yeah something fell down <laughs> so first things first let's actually turn on the map because it's so beautiful here traction control we will turn into traction which is oh just just dsc off why not if we can why shouldn't we do it left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights off revving the motor that is the kind of launch this car does unfreaking believable you heard the tire screeching because this is rear wheel drive of course and that is the advantage of rear wheel drive that your wheels or rather the front wheels where you steer are not affected when you're going aggressive on the throttle because the power is delivered to the rear wheels of course now because of the longer wheelbase high speed stability is actually good but the thing is when compared to the regular 3 series which has why am i eating my words today compared to the regular 3 series which also i mean which has a shorter wheelbase which is also based on the same platform which is the cluster architecture that one is better on the higher speeds because of the stiffer suspension this one is on the softer side that softness you can feel and that softness affects the handling of this vehicle because body roll has increased here so you feel a bit off roll when you're cornering hard and then obviously the steering also feels a little loose when compared to the regular 3 series but it's a very good steering like i really like the way the steering wheel is because it offers you good amount of feel and feedback and it is having the right weight as well overall fantastic car the 3 series has always been fab and this one is no different the grand limousine you know what it's just india and china where the 3 series long wheel base version is being sold so now bmw has a car at almost every price point which is a genius strategy i have to admit we should actually get into sport mode here it crosses speed so fast there is no hesitation at all that is the level of performance it has to offer I quite like the car i really really like the car but then that begs the question should you pay slightly more and get the 5 series instead i would say probably yes because uh, you know compared to the 3 series you're paying around 5 to 7 lakhs more for the long wheel base version and you pay another 5 7 lakhs more you will get the 5 series and obviously a 5 series is so much more desirable but this is definitely more practical so here we are going to come to a stop which means hazard lights on and a little bit of judder under heavy braking left foot on the brake hazard lights off right foot on the accelerator listen to this okay guys unbelievably nice i know i know we should do it once again so here we have got better road and it's completely empty nobody is there left foot on the brake right foot i love the way the maps actually go has a light off revving the motor I think we should do that once again so hazard lights on I just can't get done with this I love it so much here revving the motor Engine loves to pull hard and strong it's fantastic but I think it's time we actually put this traction control into traction which is sort of turn it on here hazard lights on because now it's time to launch the car again so here we are left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor launch control active Launch control is unbelievably nice. It makes sure there is no wheel spin. It makes sure this car launches with, 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 with what am I saying? Launches with so much enthusiasm as well. What a fantastic car! This three series is just lovely. It is by far the most amazing car in its segment. Better than the C class. Better than the A4 and the S60. I will not even consider because the three series and the German rivals are just in another league altogether. Beautiful in terms of handling and balance, and this. offering you the practicality makes this even more attractive around the corner look at the freaking balance i'm actually accelerating through the corner little bit washout from the front end little bit sound coming from the front wheels 
but <laughs> because the road conditions are not very smooth there's dust and there's all that what a fantastic car it just crashed through big bumps because of the soft suspension and you can feel that judder of the wheels coming inside but put that aside this is just lovely the horn is nice and loud it's fantastic I, I don't know where to complain because this car is so good in almost every possible way other than the pricing of course it's quite expensive so i estimate the top end to be priced around 71 72 lakhs so this car i'm driving 71 to 72 lakhs range should start around 68 lakhs so yes it will be on the expensive side it has to be naturally because obviously it's a bmw it is assembled in india but you know when compared to the c-class and I'm comparing the GL to the C-Class, the Grand Limousine to the C-Class. I think that it's worth paying that extra for the GL because it offers you practicality. It offers you better driving ability than the C-Class. And although it doesn't have the same tech stuff happening like the C-Class because we don't have so many ambient light colors. It's a fantastic car. It's lovely. It's easy to drive. It's fantastic in terms of dynamics. It handles really well. The ride is good. It's cushiony. The space, this comfort, this practicality, the engines are fab. The refinement is good, the gearbox is quick, everything is so good about this car. What is wrong here? Probably, you know, they could have been a little bit more aggressive with the pricing because I'm thinking maybe if I'm paying that much money, I should just get the 5 Series instead, right? Because the 5 Series, the 5 Series, is the 5 Series and... <laughs> you see, the steering balance is so good. I just left the steering, the car will auto drive yeah fab it's just amazing i don't know why i'm just going endless places for this car but i really like the three series i think if you have to buy a car between 50 to 70 lakhs close your eyes get a three series don't get the fortuner don't get the c-class don't get any of these cars unless and until obviously you love mercedes cars and the c-class obviously has a big fan base too it's a fantastic car it's now a mini s class but for someone who really loves driving for someone driving is everything the regular 3 series is fantastic for someone who wants practicality this one is just offering you so much more for just five seven lakhs more like both the i mean the best of both worlds practicality as well as driving feel where do you get that in a german car which doesn't cost two crores like the s63 which is gone right now but any of the v8 powered cars or maybe i'm talking about say the e50 63 not the 53 so those cars will offer you all that but for indian roads i think this is fantastic in fact i think the best performance car to buy for indian roads is the m340i so with the lci they have done absolutely nothing at all to the engine the gearbox the chassis the suspension everything is the same the changes are all cosmetics why, why is only cosmetic changes done to this car simply because uh, bmw engineers who actually work on the dynamics and the chassis they said see boss we have made something which is almost perfect we don't want to come and meddle with it so leave us alone we are going for a vacation they all left the designers were like okay let's make a couple of changes here and there to the grill no, they didn't even touch the grill they just made changes to the lights and the bumpers both front and rear and then some to the interior new screens and all and bang on you've got the new three series fresh lift the lci like it's a genius why fix something which isn't broke that's what exactly the lci is all about okay left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator launch control active so the camera couldn't take the g-force and just shut itself so we launch again launch control active let's see what fuel efficiency i'm getting on this particular drive so we'll just get into the menu i'd actually reset it the journey data i love the way this display is just amazing 6.2 kilometers per liter which is not bad at all but the claim fuel efficiency happens to be 15.39 kilometers per liter which obviously is ARI certified sort of thingy which is very optimistic naturally that's how it works with ARI and as I see it it's a fantastic car what a lovely car it's such a joy to drive this 3 series in spite of the fact that this is actually softened up it still is mind-blowingly phenomenal i freaking love it if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye let's just downshift and have some fun in fact let's get into manual mode we are in manual mode right now okay check this out <laughs> shifters baby